All right, now, everybody. All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. What up, everybody? Good morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Winter is here, huh? Pretty crazy. Good to have everybody in the chat. People showed up on time. Everybody showed up on time but us. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about various things we wanted to show you. I look at the clock and I said, you know, guys, <laughs> it's 10.02. We may want to start. <laughs> That's what happens. What a crew. What a crew. Kim is here. Kim, how are you? Kim, how are you? Good morning. I'm On good. a gray day. What, what's happening in Petaluma? Gray day in Petaluma. It's a little, I think it's going to rain. Hey, have you have you heard from Joe Box yet on the delivery of your banner yet? Joe Box and Little Joe Anthony. Box. No, and no now nothing. I have to get back to Joe Box. Oh my god. So Joe Box and I are trading emails. Oh wow, that's exciting. Joe Box and Little Anthony. Anthony. You made a pal. Yeah. You made an underworld pal. That's cool. He's nice, Joe Box. He does seem like a nice guy, and he yeah. bought the banner which supports the show. Tony is here today. Thanks, Tony. And uh, Tony is here. Albert uh, not here today. So Tony, you got to do it all today, baby. You got to. So. Oh, you kid. Well, I'm Thanks, sorry Tony. in advance. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony, what angered you? Oh, I love it. Because he's not feeling very well. He is Bad playing boy. hurt, and he's been playing hurt the last couple of days, actually. But today, yeah. I think he's um, yeah. Um, it is never good when one of our uh, when one of our core players, <clears throat> you know, has to has to suit up, even though he's um, a little under the weather. I tried Speak, to compliment yeah. him on a sexy voice, and he's like, actually, I'm sick. And then I felt really bad. Well, as long as you feel bad, exactly. we're doing our <laughs> job. Yeah, exactly. Um, thanks for uh, smashing the like button, by the way. I know you know it's kind of a weird thing to say. Uh, believe me, it's the new media, and I have to ask you to hit the thumbs up. Smash it with your iron rod. Yeah, with your iron rod or whatever is handy. Uh, hit the thumbs up. It does help us in the YouTube algorithms. I will go into some specific shout outs and thank yous for those of you who stepped up and supported the show. We'll do those. Uh, when are we doing them again, Tony? You're, you're the boss on that. On timing after on the, that. We'll do after news at 1030, after news at 11, after news at 1130 is where I kind of broke them up. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Tony. And Tony did all the work to like get it all together so we can uh, yeah. post some names, etc. So, uh, But I appreciate... Everybody whose name we are not getting to, we do put all names, everyone who's made a contribution, who's a Patreon member, and everyone who makes a PayPal donation, we put them all at the end of the show in the credits. And yes, I've asked, and this is not easy for Tony to do, I've asked for people who've really stepped up and donated even more than you know the small amounts. Believe me, I'm grateful for any amount, but I just want to really acknowledge those of you who've stepped up uh, with the more sizable amount, amounts and make your names more sizable. So that was just a kind of an idea that we've carried through. And Tony uh, tells me 450 names. It's a Thanks, Tony. it's a very fifty names. <laughs> it's a very difficult process to make the names it bigger. Makes me feel really good. Though, Thank that, all you wonderful uh, 450 yeah. people. Thank you so much. Really 450 nice. names. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, without those without those people, we got no Tony, we got no Kim, we yeah. got no Albert, we got no show. So I am super grateful, as everybody on this show really does understand how important it is. Yeah. It's a weird, uh, yeah, it's a weird thing. Thanks, so Tony. anyway, Welcome thank to you this all. Weird world, right? It is weird because we're used to being people who show up to a place and the ads are sold by an ad sales department. And those ads support the show. And completely separate from programming. Like it, right. it's, they are they are separate worlds. We don't yeah. even know what's happening with what ad breaks are, what, what spots are in there. That's not yeah. our problem, you know. It's just that's sure exactly right. right. Yeah, Tony's exactly right. And we worry about content. As a matter of now, fact, when you see one of those ad guys coming down the hall, usually you do what you can to turn the other way. <laughs> I'm out of Back in the um, studio, they're coming. Yes, it is true. Often what you end up doing and this uh, since that part of my um, life and our lives uh, uh, is over. Tony still has a foot in that world. We, we have yeah. I think all of us have feet in, in that world on some level. But this is our real main project. Um, 
the number of what they call spec spots that I had to do. Oh. And you, all, uh, my view is always say yes. Like I would never say no to a salesperson. I'm always yeah. trying to help the station make money because I knew KGO was faltering. I knew that, you know, it's hard to sell KGO in a cluster of stations. They've got the bone, they've got um, KNBR, they have the giants, um, which is a big number they had to hit in terms of the budget, you know, because they have to pay a lot for the giants. Mm -hmm. Same is true of the Niners. So I'm always saying yes, but man, I had to do a lot of spec spots that never came to pass, you know? Um, and oh, yeah. I'm so glad that we have a real legit sponsor on this show, Steve Moskowitz, because, you know, it's not a sketchy spec spot I'm doing for some, you know, he's a real guy over 30 years in the Bay Area with uh, really helping people out, small business people and medium and large businesses. Steve's an amazing guy and you should check him out for all of your tax questions and all of the things related to your tax situation 888-TAX-DEAL 888-T-A-X-D-E-A-L 888-TAX-DEAL Steve Moskowitz is at moskowitzllp.com and, and by the way that conversation was just natural and I just thought oh I just should mention Steve Moskowitz here I, that wasn't like a long ramp up to get Steve Moskowitz in believe me I mean what it's you did <laughs> oh yeah I it really was I so I, I don't I never want you to think that what we're doing on this show is anything but organic this is truly unvarnished that's why I say hey Tony how come on that open, it goes, it double clutches yeah. like three times before it, it starts? That's, just, that's been happening a lot lately. I don't know. I push it once and then it just stops. And then I push it again and then yelling? it stops again. I don't know why that's happening. <laughs> But that also happened to the ending yesterday. That's why you kind of popped up real fast, if anybody would notice. Oh, yeah. Why are you just, yelling? We were just sitting uh, there, then it went back starting. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Happening. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. StreamYard <clears throat> updated, and it's doing things. So I'll, I'm on it. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. All right. Thanks, Tony. Like, all it's right. okay if it was a slow start. If it took us three times to get there, we got there. All right. Well, that's I need a very, to, I need to update a, that, that intro anyway. So because yeah. that's a positive a spin. Yeah, that's right. And John's I think John's yeah. face is still there. We got to change that. But uh, anyway, so all of that's still to come. Look, uh, there are guests galore today. David Katz, the former U.S. Assistant District Attorney, is going to join us. He'll talk about the SCOTUS decision on Title 42 that involves immigration. That'll be in the 11 o'clock hour, just after 11 o'clock. Uh, as long as I'm talking about the 11 o'clock hour, Belinda should be here with, um, I say should be because I haven't heard from her, but I'm presuming she will be with uh, It's the Planet Stupid, News of the Environment, News of the Earth. And in the first hour, just after the bottom of the hour, Jefferson Graham, host of Photo Walks and uh, Bay Area Luminary. Um, so many great California walks, so many Bay Area walks. The son of Jerry Graham, who used to do Bay Area back roads. Anyway, he'll be here. It's his year-end visit to the show. And he'll give you the three top photo tips, the three tips you need for taking good pictures. Jefferson will do that, and he'll also likely favor us with a an old Lang Syne. Doesn't he? He's a guitar virtuoso, so oh, he'll yeah. probably yeah he'll probably yank the guitar off the wall and and give us a little bit of that. In the meantime, yes, I'll get to Cosby, but I wanted to tell you that the. COVID situation is in flux, I would say. I say that because we've discussed before that Chinese went from a zero COVID policy and essentially a total shutdown. And it's gone on for years now, right? And since the beginning of COVID, it's been violent at times, as you're aware. I mean, when people were moving about China, and of course, the government is well aware of their, their whereabouts, they were literally pulled into situations where they were there were these covid centers in effect and they had to cool out in these covid centers till if they tested positive till they tested tested negative and now with the covid shutdown taking its toll on their economy and taking its toll on the people i mean there's really a rebellion going on in china right they're saying hey we've had enough of this yeah because covid's not going away and our lives are going away they are loosening restrictions which is shocking that people in china would stand up and start protesting anyway right. over this and that it seems like someone was listening you know well it's uh, kim's exactly right i mean you do it at great personal peril right 
Uh, but the interesting thing, there are two things I think that are at minimum interesting, two things. One of which is you are likely to see a spike, which is already happening in China, mm-hmm. of COVID and COVID cases. The other thing is, and then I'll get to the travel ban, I think you're likely to see new variants coming out of the COVID world in China. And the reason for that is you now have a whole new population being exposed and a whole new whole new way potentially that the COVID virus will be mutating. So I think it is an area of concern. And it's in that spirit, just based on the COVID numbers spiking in China, that the U.S. is saying, hey, beginning January 5th, anybody coming from China has to test negative for COVID before being let into this country, the United States. The problem with that is that it's January 5th. And to be fair, it's very hard if they said, look, beginning now, you can't get into the U.S. without a negative COVID test. It's just not a viable policy. You just can't impose these policies to take immediate effect, something like that. In other words, there is almost an infrastructure that has to be set up to establish what proof you want, what demonstrable ways travelers can indicate they've tested negative. These are things that have to be coordinated and they have to be coordinated through all of the different entry points in the U.S. So you can see that it it takes time to ramp up a policy like this. And by that time, all the variants are here. Thank you very much. That's exactly what I was getting to. Yeah, I'm sorry to steal your thunder. No, 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 not at all. I mean, I I think you helped the conversation along. And in fact, just the opposite. I I really am glad you make the point because that's where I am. Uh, I think we are kind of where we were at the beginning of COVID, where you're closing the barn door after the horses are out. Uh, I don't know that you had an alternative. As I say, I don't think you could impose this policy to take place Friday, tomorrow, or Saturday to begin, you know, one of those days. But January 5th feels as though it's just too late. And it conceivably could be too late already. I mean, but, if, you're uh, thinking, if you're thinking about it two weeks ago, then two weeks ago is when it should have happened, right? The minute you think, okay, we got a problem, that's when the rules should kick in. It's like in California, the, the whole light dimmer switch with the Governor Gavin Newsom. We're going to have to toggle it back and forth, he said. And we've been pretty good in in our state about, okay, is it time for masks again? Is it not? You know, going back and forth. But on a federal level, it seems to take way too long. Yeah, yeah. The notion that you could be ramping up to this for the last couple of weeks and still have taken this long, it's a good one. I do think it takes a, a, a second or two to get health policy together. There are a lot of different moving parts, as you might imagine. I give him a little bit of a break on that, but I also think, yeah, you can look at this policy and go, wow, guys, you know, you're late to the party on this. Yeah. Um, demonstrable is a ding word, Tom says. <laughs> Probably is. All right. Yeah. Um, it's not a fun ding word, but you're right. It probably is a ding word. Um, we're traveling through Asia in March, Beth says, via Hong Kong. I'm really worried how that will work out. First of all, I have to say, it's an exciting trip, Asia. Uh, I'm envious on one level, but of course, you have to worry about those things that are related to the illness, you know. Um, so, uh, we'll, um, what is this? Yeah, well, guest suggestions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gavin is good with any restrictions if it involves visits to the French Laundry. Yes. Well, there's well, that. That guy really will never get past that French Laundry thing. Mm -mm. It's funny how, you know, just like Cosby just won't get past that sexual assault thing. It just won't happen. You know what I mean? You want to reinvent yourself, Cos, but you just can't do it. Uh, It is the height of cojones that this guy wants to get back out on tour, you know? He wants to begin touring again. Uh, Bill Cosby making uh, this announcement. Let me give it to you here. All right. The Mark Thompson Show. Bill Cosby to begin touring again. Just over a year after he left prison following the overturning of that sexual assault conviction, there is so much fun to be had in this story t- in this storytelling that I do, he said. Cosby was released in June of 
last year, 2021, after his sexual assault conviction was overturned. You remember why it was overturned? It wasn't overturned because he was uh, cleared of having done these awful things to these women. No. Uh, in this case, it was a specific woman that uh, was involved in the one case where he found, was found guilty. He was overturned because, as I recall, prosecutors had provided him certain guarantees that if he spoke in depositions about the incident, those things that he said about the incident that might incriminate him would not be used against him for future prosecution. And then they did use it against him. Isn't that essentially what happened, Kim? I think uh, so. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah. The actor is looking at the spring, summer of 2023 to start touring. Wow. It's going to be an exciting Bill Cosby tour, what? everybody. I know. I know. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. Does it? Do you think it sells out? I think or do you... you do you think it's crickets? No, I think I think it probably sells out. I think he probably gets people. There are people, you know, look, there are people who still haven't accepted that Liberace was gay. <laughs> All right. I mean, there there there's always a core group. And America is it's not just America. I mean, everywhere. Uh, people are people, and you know, he's got his fans. Um hey, he was touring before they arrested him and tried him. Right. You know. Remember, he when has all the, that. All the that, information that, was out there already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been out there for a while. Yeah. Um, Cosby, 85, expressed his desire to go on tour next year during a surprise appearance um, on a TV show, I guess, or a radio show. Uh, oh, it was a radio show, WGH Talk. Um, he says, yes, because there's so much fun to be had in this storytelling that I do. Years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I found it was better to say it after I write it, he said. If he uh, goes out on tour, Representative for Cosby said that uh, he's looking at the spring summer to start. Uh, he left prison after his 2018 sexual assault conviction in Pennsylvania was overturned. So there you have it. The cause back out there. I just am astounded that in the new world, there is no shame for anything, right? Look at Santos. The Santos story is interesting as well. I could do a... This one's kind of evolving a little bit. And now there's yeah. some type of investigation going on. So... Tony, do you have the uh, investigation of Santos uh, ready to go? Ready-ish? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. I sent you? Okay. Thanks, Tony. Uh, let's, let's run a little bit of it. It's short, and you'll, you'll be able to get a sense of the overview anyway. This is the Santos situation, the guy who lied his way into lying a congressional liar. seat in New York. Your pants are on fire. Mm. <laughs> now to a newly elected member of Congress who's admitted lying about a Wall Street career, a college degree, and other key parts of his background. He's now the focus of multiple investigations. His name is uh, George Santos. He's a New York Republican, and he's scheduled to be sworn into the House next Tuesday. But a county prosecutor is now examining how Santos, who had a history of financial troubles, paid for his campaign. And the state attorney general's office is also looking into some of the revelations uncovered by the New York Times. At this point, the congressman elected says he has no intention of stepping aside. A lot of swirling questions around him. Yeah, a lot of buzz mm -hmm. about that this week. Right. Yeah, nice call job. Call me a liar. <laughs> what do you call me? <laughs> right, I'm calling you liar, liar, pants. Liar, liar, your, your pants, pants are, on. are on fire! Yeah. Um, Absolutely on fire. On but fire, the, and and he doesn't care. Yes, my that's pants the point. are on fire, and, that's and yet I'll carry on my very way. That's fine. That's why I mentioned him in the context of Cosby. There is no shame. <laughs> You know, Nobody pay just, attention to the flames. Look away. It's just you're exactly <laughs> right. It's it's a remarkable thing that a Santos is so completely, you know, head down, move forward. And the GOP is silent on him. You know, no one's reprimanding him, calling for an ethics investigation, anything. The big thing and the thing that may do him in, as usual, is money. He will have to account conceivably, and this is where the Federal Election Commission and uh, those things that these parts of the investigate, uh, investigative arms of Congress, should they power them up? And possibly even, you know, within the state of New York, they'll focus on where this money came from that funded his campaign. He supposedly has noted uh, 
loaned the campaign $700,000, and yet a, a year prior, he claimed he didn't have any money at all. So this guy has a lot of different stories working, and it doesn't appear that any of these stories are true. So uh, what the real truth is, he claimed he was a, the, the son of Holocaust survivors. I mean, he's, he's really um, used every imaginable falsehood to gain the trust and confidence of voters and to gain a congressional seat in the state of New York. He'll be a powerful guy from the standpoint of Lee's. And as I told you, and if you, if you missed it, uh, and, and David K. Johnson agreed with me, you'll remember, congressional seats typically don't get any journalistic vetting. Nobody checks anything on a congressional seat. You can say whatever you want when you're running for a congressional seat. Why? Because there's so many of them. Look at the state of New York. Look at how many races there are. And look how small the districts are. So the major papers and major journalism outfits don't really cover them because there are no clicks there. There are no viewers there. There's no interest there. It doesn't affect enough people. And then after the fact, something like this is revealed, and that's when it gets the attention. But the reason it doesn't get the attention initially is simply because there's not enough interest in the race. We didn't know George Santos's name before he won the seat. Then they flip Congress, the GOP, and now all of a sudden everybody's interested in who these guys are, Santos among them. So, also because local news is dead, maybe. Local news of that sort that would uncover this kind of thing probably is dead. I don't know that it was ever around, you know. It takes real journalism with time, and that just mm -hmm. isn't something that is in, you know, that's in short supply in most newsrooms, time, right? Time and money. discussion when you were on vacation with Jim Avila and Michael Schur about lazy journalism, about the way that Twitter and uh, social media has changed journalism and that it causes people not to dig, not to make those beat calls, you know, not to do all the, the old school things that, you know, we always have done because the information is kind of that we think it's right at our fingertips. A search is good enough, right? Right, so. right. I also think that, journalists, reporters, I'll say, mm -hmm. are, because there really is still good journalism being done, but it's you true. have to look for it. And I mean, Politico goes, does good stuff. I mean, ProPublica does great stuff. I mean, and so on. The Intercept does incredible stuff. And now The Intercept, their stuff is so good. They're being sued. That would be a good guess for us. Maybe we'll get one next week. Uh, they're being sued by Eric Prince. Eric Prince is the guy who was the, he essentially has the private army. Okay, so he, um, remember Blackwater, that is Eric Prince. It's now been renamed like six times. But Eric Prince is suing The Intercept, and he's part of a group suing The Intercept. And the reason they're suing him is because The Intercept does real journalism and has really revealed things about that entire world. Anyway, more on that another time. But to, to Kim's point, I think there's a lot of just uh, basic reporter taking down whatever somebody says and then going with it. I mean, that's what happened in the case of Santos. They just went with whatever he said. So uh, anyway, uh, much more to come. We've got Jefferson Graham in the next uh, uh, half hour. Uh, I also want to talk about the atmospheric river and the weather that's moving into California. I'll touch on Southwest Airlines as well. And the fact that they may have to rethink their entire business model and their entire strategic aviation model moving forward as a result of, as a result of what's being revealed from this storm. Then next hour, David Katz, he joins us top of the hour. We'll talk uh, SCOTUS decision. We'll talk Mark Meadows destroying documents. And then it's the planet stupid as well. So much to come here. Smash the like button like a boss. The Mark Thompson Show. But how about it for Steve Moskowitz right now, everybody? What's up, Steve? I'm here. The, the year is winding <laughs> down, and we're coming up to my favorite time of year. Oh. Back season. Oh man! <laughs> nerd alert! Nerd alert! Tax That's great. Season is our reward for that year's worth of planning, Mark. This is oh, it's like that's making good. An investment. And yeah. then you get that check and say, you know, that hundred bucks you invested, here's your million. You say, hey, that's my reward. That sounds like a great conversation. Yeah. No, it is true though, Steve. And you talk about the different ways in which the government can offer you opportunities. Yeah. And you certainly don't want to be paying more taxes than you have to. 
The big boys don't, wealthy people don't, the big corporations don't. The people that do are the really hardworking small business. Here, here's a life of a typical small business owner. They, they drag home at night and think, ah, should I get something to eat or should I go right to bed? They're exhausted. And the last thing they're thinking about is, well, let me get the books and go. They're not thinking about that. And you know what? They shouldn't have to. It's like you don't change. Most people don't change the oil in their own car. You have somebody do that for you. And our, our whole lives since Adam Smith and specialization of labor is, you know, one person does one thing. One person does something else. I don't tell a dentist how to drill. I, I have no idea. But in turn, that dentist or that person that has the bakery or the restaurant or any other type of business shouldn't have to worry about this. You have our firm coming in and supplying what you need, but only in, like medicine, only in the doses that you need it. The big companies have armies of people like me doing all this stuff. Small business can't afford that. And a small business doesn't need that. For example, you don't need a full-time CFO. You don't need a full-time HR person but you do need a part-timer and that's what we supply. We supply the expertise in the portion that you need and we do everything for you. And Mike, you don't have to have a tax problem. <laughs> that's, that's only part of what we do. Part sure. of what we do is regular old tax returns and tax planning. You know, I, I know the, the problems get a lot of attention and when I'm on TV or radio, you know, that's kind of the sexier things that people want to talk about, but we do just regular old, taxes and we're happy to do your return for you give us a call and, and let's meet yeah uh, I, I and and i think what you learn when you have the return you done too, Darren. yeah is that there are a number of advantages you're not taking because you didn't know about them uh, that's what I, that's what i've learned in our conversations that a simple return actually may offer opportunities even when you don't think they're there after talking to moskowitz so I encourage you to call Steve, 888-TAX-DEAL, 888-T-A-X-D-E-A-L. I wanted to ask you uh, next hour, because I'm out of time for this half hour, but um, about C-Corps and S-Corps. I was talking to somebody last night about this. Can we talk about it next? Can Absolutely. you just put it? Absolutely. I, oh, okay, I, okay. I could take up your show on the difference between C and S advantages. Okay. All right. So I want to talk right. about that, it's particularly as it pertains to small business. That's why I like it. So, How but excited he got. He's yeah. so well, we're going to talk about taxes. You know I love talking about taxes. Corps uh, and S corps. Eight 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 tax deal. Welcome to my I world. I love you. I love you. <laughs> love you too. Uh, Steve Moskowitz is eight 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 tax deal. Triple A T A X D E A L. You can reach him online at moskowitzllp.com. Put it together for Steve Moskowitz, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging out, my friend. The Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. I am so glad you joined us. Smash the like button like a boss while you're here. If you're watching in replay, hit that thumbs up, kid. Smash it with your iron rod. Oh, do it, do it, do it. Just do oh. it. Smash yeah. it with your iron <laughs> rod. Yeah, hit that like button, baby. Hit it. Wow. Uh, it's pretty special. Appreciate you... Um, you being here, we're going to take a break for Kim's News. We're going to acknowledge some people who have helped make this show happen. All through the month of December, people have been donating through Patreon and also through PayPal because, as you know, we've been demonetized on YouTube. You can't leave us super stickers or super chats because of a clerical error. I'm working through it. We're working with them. We hope it'll be uh, resuming soon. But essentially, you have to go through extra clicks now which uh, take you to the markthompsonshow.com and you contribute then through Patreon or PayPal. It's the only way we're supported. So we're it's losing really a lot of money right now on not being able to monetize through YouTube because our numbers are really good and we were bringing in money through YouTube because our numbers are so good. But now without your donations, we just, we fail. So it's a, it's a sad fact, but we need to beg a little bit. And you guys I have been know. great. <laughs> but we appreciate it. five bucks or 300 bucks every that's exactly right single cent counts and we're very grateful really. that's exactly right that's exactly right what uh what kim said is uh exactly right so all right um i'm just looking around a lot to kim, do how are you i will hit kim's news now and then some acknowledgments and jefferson graham joins in the next half hour
Mark Thompson show. We have processes and protocols and standards. Uh, we do have that. Uh, but don't we have the... Uh... Yeah, that was good. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by tax attorney Steve Moskowitz at 888-TAX-DEAL. Oh, God, it's happening again. It's another day of this. Travelers seeing thousands of flight cancellations today. Flight Aware says more than 2,400 flights have been canceled, more than 1,600 delayed. Southwest has far and away the most canceled flights at more than 2,300, almost six in 10 of its scheduled flights. They say their schedule issues could be fixed by tomorrow. I'm not holding my breath. More than 15,000 flights have been canceled by the airline over the last week. Is the young thug. There he is. Jury selection in the trial of an Atlanta rapper accused of being a street gang leader set to begin next week. 11 Alive, great name for a news organization, reports a lieutenant from Fulton County DA Fannie Willis's office appeared virtually in court this week and answered questions about the information she collected on young thugs gang activity. The 31-year-old rapper is facing RICO charges in Fulton County for his alleged role as the head of the street gang known as Young Slime Life, or YSL. It's uh, more laws. Wasn't Young, Sl- Young Slime Life seems like it's not a good name for a news organization. Like 11 <laughs> Alive does work. 11 Alive. But- yeah. Young slime life. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only young thug is here. Yeah, well, the one and only one here, unfortunately, is a courtroom. So, yeah. <laughs> there are states and cities across America seeing new laws take effect in the new year. 27 states will see the minimum wage increase in 2023. Meanwhile, Maryland and Missouri will be the latest states to offer legalized recreational marijuana for adults over the age of 21. Where are my and, weed smokers at? There you go. Right. Yeah. An update on the story out of Buffalo, New York. Sad situation. The death toll now up to 37 in the city of Buffalo. Following this historic winter storm, temperatures are on the rise there in western New York and across much of the U.S., bringing some relief to areas really crippled by this bone-chilling cold. But a powerful storm is picking up and expected to bring more rain, more snow, and flood risks to the western half of the country. And another update about what's going on in Ukraine as well. Today, uh, officials in Ukraine say Russia just carried out one of its largest missile strikes since that war began. The attacks targeting Kiev and other cities today used a combination of drones and cruise missiles to damage criti- critical infrastructure. Several regions were left without power, including 40% of residents in Kiev alone. A lot of people out there looking for a job. Uh, more Americans filing for unemployment. The Labor Department says claims for the week that ended December 24th increased to 225,000. That's compared to last week's number of 216,000. We've got some new rules on the way in here in California. I don't know. If, I don't know if I like that picture. However, uh, <laughs> it's important to note that come the first of the year, buying or leasing an electric vehicle in California is going to come with a much larger rebate. The state wow. is increasing the current rebate, which is $4,500 to $7,500 on most electric vehicles. Income restrictions apply, but to qualify for the maximum rebate, individual tax filers have to make less than $56,000 a year or less than $111,000 for a family of four. A federal rebate of up to $7,500 may also apply. So things are changing in the electric vehicle front. Stan Lee, yes, Marvel gearing up to release a Disney Plus documentary about Stan Lee. There he is with all of his friends. Lee is most well-known for creating Marvel characters like Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America, the Hulk, the list goes on. A Wednesday would have been Lee's 100th birthday, and the studio released a short trailer for this documentary and announced its arrival in 2023. Oh, we should run that trailer maybe tomorrow. Okay, that sounds good. You know, I mean, with Snyder here anyway, he's a yeah. big, you know, Stan Lee comics book, comic book, Marvel sure. yeah. dude. So um, was it Mar- Marvel was the, was it yeah. Marvel? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Marvel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How so old you- was he when he died? I don't That's know a good. Um, in his nineties, I think. I don't. Yeah, know. ninety-five yeah. is the answer. Oh, 
Yeah, he lived a good long life. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, I just, I'll end on this note. You think that, you know, after all the celebrations that we've had in America with confetti coming down, we would know what's the good confetti, what's not. Well, apparently we're still in test mode. Officials testing out what they're calling the airworthiness of confetti today (laughs) in preparation for the big New Year's Eve celebration in Times Square. When the ball drops at midnight, some 3,000 pounds of confetti will be released on revelers. Some of that confetti will have thousands of wishes from individuals who have submitted them at the New Year's Eve wishing wall in Times Square. So today comes the test. We'll find out which confetti is airworthy. And then all that comes down. To be the poor sap that has to clean all that up is such a bummer. (laughs) Right? Am I thinking like a mom? This report yeah. sponsored by tax attorney Steve <laughs> Moskowitz. For more than 30 years, Steve has put his tax knowledge to work for individuals and for businesses alike. So if you need help with your taxes, you can call Steve at 888-TAX-DEAL. You can see it at the bottom of the screen or moskowitzllp.com spelled out for you right there. I'm Kim McAllister on The Mark Thompson Show. Do you feel it? It's The Mark Thompson Show. Who's Mark Thompson? What up, everybody? It is our big Thursday show in between the wetness. It's cloudy and there's another atmospheric river waiting to uh, drop more rain and snow on California. Could be a messy end of the week, uh, an end of the year. One of the guys who is a huge friend of the show, if you only knew, he helps us and advises us on a number of ways with uh, issues involving YouTube as we deal with all of that and with our... um, our posts every day. Jefferson Graham is so useful to us just as a friend of the show. And, you know, we were always a fan of Jefferson Graham, a longtime writer, former writer for USA Today. And he took his entire uh, writing about uh, tech and about uh, photos and about uh, taking pictures and about seeing places, but also recording them uh, through even basic phone technology. He took that whole thing to the Substack. So you can uh, read Jefferson Graham now on his Substack. We'll give you all of the information on Jefferson Graham, and I'll post links in this video. It's the longest intro ever for our pal Jefferson (laughs) Graham, everybody. What's up, Jeff? Hey, good to see you. You look like a guy happy in his uh, world with, uh, is it two guitars or one guitar you have on the wall? There are two guitars behind me and several others on the other side. So if there's time, we'd love for you to favor us with maybe Old Lang Syne or something, you know, something. It's one of my all-time favorite songs. Cool. Oh, um, here it is. I'm glad that we posted your Substack on the screen now. It's jeffersongram.substack.com. So here's, uh, let me just give you a 10-second little bit of hype because I really like this Substack you do. When you subscribe, which I've done, of course, a, a long time ago, but you get automatically fed to you in your email box all of these different tips and updates and videos and all the rest and links to his YouTube series, the photo walks YouTube series. So I really recommend it and I think you'll really enjoy it. And as I say, once you subscribe, it just hits automatically. And it's like, uh, it's like the notification bell on our show. If you hit that, it just tells you, Hey, the show is on, or there's a new video from the Mark Thompson show. Similarly, uh, he sends you an email and, and you get it and you can click on all these great things. So congratulations on great success with that. Thank you. It's really it's been exciting. I left USA Today two years ago, January 4th, and uh, life has been really great. I love working for myself. It's fun. Yeah. Well, we haven't gotten to the fun part yet, but we, we like the show is fun, but the trying to get everything up and running is has been a little bit of a heavy lift. But you've been very helpful to us on this show, and we thank you for that. Well, you do something every year, and I'd love for you to do it with us now which is associated with the the tips, the top three tips, you know, for, in this case, taking pictures. I wonder if you could share with us some tips, top three yeah. for taking good photos. Okay. So Keep, number... keeping in mind that most of us don't have like advanced technologies for no, taking no, pictures. No, it's, it's, it's smartphone stuff. It's all okay, great. smartphone. Okay. So the number one tip, and it's really important, is keep moving. Compose the shot. And if you don't like it that way, go that way, go that way, go left, right, go up, down, go, uh, tilt the camera down, tilt the camera up, try every angle possible. Um, I have a problem with the sunset. When the sun is beaming into my lens, I get a green dot. 
And I have a fix for it. It's not the best, but basically you line up the dot into the sun and it disappears. I went to Apple and I say, what do we do about this? How can we fix it? And they said, tilt the camera, keep moving. Okay. Which is the same thing that I've been saying a lot. Just, you know, you'll get it right. If Mark doesn't look good that way, he'll look good the other way. Um, and give oh, it a Mark try. always looks good. Well, he does always look good. <laughs> wow. Uh, the you know, amount of uh, sucking up around here at the end of the year is quite quite impressive. Yeah, I'm okay, a go fool. Ahead. I ain't nobody's fool. <laughs> okay. So no, you Mark have to keep, keep, the keep the camera keep moving. Keep the camera moving. Keep the camera moving. Keep the face moving. First thing I do is I look at you and look at how the light is on your face, and I'll move you around until we get it just right. Uh, because there's there's four angles, right? There's front and sides and back, and one of those is going to look pretty good. <laughs> well, that seems like a basic tip. But maybe one that would, you know, escape you if you didn't know it. So no, number two, which has escaped you, is to use the volume button on the side of the phone as your shutter. And I'll give you two reasons why. First of all, modern phones are now water resistant. If you're going on vacation in a few days and you're going to jump into a pool, you can do that with these phones. What? Yes, you can. I uh, wouldn't, though. I would be too scared. Oh I've done my it. God, I've Jeff. done it. I, I have a video. It's up on PhotoWalks TV. Of, uh, I went to Palos Verdes and shot all this stuff un under a pool, you know, in a pool. Um, and it looks great. It's, it's wonderful. But you can't make the touchscreen operate. It won't, won't respond to you. But yeah. you can use right. the volume button. Thing, right? The volume yeah. button you can do. And then if you're going to ah. do if you're going to jump in the water, put it on video, and then then you'll you'll be running. The other That's, thing. Uh, wait, 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 wait. That's a great hack you just gave us. Thank you. Because when I even when I wash my screen or wipe it down, all of a sudden it becomes uh, I can't get it to do anything. But yeah. you're saying. That's by design, but the side buttons, the volume buttons, will still work. Yes. Can and they the, be uh, used at all? To and and I'm so so. Let me just. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit slow. Okay. So <laughs> when the when you jump into the pool, which you know, again, I'm with Kim, kind of like a little bit uh, risky. But all right, when you're around that kind of environment and the water's on the front of the lens, what does the volume button do? What do they do in terms of taking a picture? Or uh, sorry, it, go ahead. It snaps the shutter. It does. Yes. I didn't know that. And then the did other you know thing, that? Mark, Kim, Kim, did you I, know that? I did because I've done it by accident. I see. <laughs> so <laughs> what happens with my phone is I have a million pictures of my home screen or all the icons on my phone because I <laughs> scrolled too tight and I took a random screenshot or whatever. So, yeah. That's great. The yeah. other thing, Mark and yes, Kim, sir. is it's supposed to rain soon. There's yeah. nothing cooler than rain shots in Los Angeles and San Francisco and all over the place. The first thing, if you're out early in the morning, uh, you, you'll get the reflections, the colorful reflections uh, on the oh, city sure. streets. And it looks amazing. And our phones are water resistant. And you could just run around town taking pictures on your phone and use the shutter button. The other thing the shutter button will do, the volume button, is it goes into burst mode. Uh, it, you have to adjust it in settings. But I can take pictures of Mark and Kim running down the street really fast and just hold the button down, hold the volume button down and get 30 shots of them. And that's a really great way to stop the action. Okay. That is- uh, coming in from Ren. What was the Ren question? Uh, how can I get holiday lights to show up brightly when photos are taken at night? The phone mutes the brightness and makes the pictures look much less spectacular. She's right. The thing about the um, the phones is that they're automatic and they're great and they get things right 90% of the time. Uh, sometimes they don't get it right and you have to go adjust the exposure. You can do that in the menu settings. Uh, you have two stops and two stops meaning you go up, you go down. And I would just up the exposure all the way to get the lights to look right. And then the other thing you could do is, is edit the photo afterwards and you can uh -huh. boost the exposure that way. Uh, let me ask you about something uh, where you, uh, and if this is the same thing, cause it might be easier or maybe it's harder. I don't know. You guys can tell me, but when you, uh, feel as though it's not like in Ren's case, getting the exposure that she wants for those lights. You can take your finger, you can hold it on the uh, 
image and then you can just move and you'll see a little thing show up a little uh, almost slider and you can slide it down and up now that's the same thing as going into the menu and adjusting the exposure or, yeah. or is it yeah okay. i find that going into the menu works better but you can okay. also do the thing with your okay. finger and it goes back to tip number one keep moving keep tilting keep mm. angling that phone until it gets right because one of those angles is going to do it for you and maybe you're too far away maybe you should get closer try a close-up all right so uh, i think that was at least two two tips we've done <laughs> all right so okay, give me the third please uh shoot video and photos at the same time. There will be situations where you can't move fast enough. I was just in Palm Desert where I went to this wonderful zoo called the Living Desert, and there was a jaguar, believe it or not, and he was patrolling and walking up and down occasionally, and you couldn't move as fast as he could, but you could shoot a very nice video clip. The iPhone has a white button above the record button that lets you shoot stills while you're recording video. And I believe something like that's on the Galaxy, though I couldn't find it this morning, but I will find it, I promise. Uh, the, and then if you don't do it that way, you could always do a still frame, a, a screenshot of the video le later. So uh, two weeks ago, they had fireworks in Manhattan Beach where I live, and it was just too hard to keep on trying to get the photo right. Just let the video roll, which is really cool, and then get a still frame from that. What do you guys think? No, I think that's a that's such a great hack. That's such a you know so straightforward. You're right, uh, and, and I love. I also love. Sorry to interrupt, Kim, but I was just going to say I love that you can do that after the fact too, because oftentimes you go, "Gosh, I, you know, I I don't want to screw the image up by you know hitting this thing or hitting that thing." So you can always do it after the fact, and you can still frame it afterward. Yeah, just be sure to go into edit. When you edit the photo, you'll, you'll, there'll be borders that get applied to the screenshot. Take them out in the editing by hitting the crop tool. Oh, okay. That's good. What did you have, Kim? Sorry. Oh, I was going to say two things about that. Uh, first of all, that's why I switched from a Google Pixel to this iPhone because of that feature. Because I take a lot of videos and pictures at kids' events, plays and things. And sometimes I really want to video it but I don't want to stop the video to take a picture. So to have that capability has been really, really good for me. I use it a lot. Yeah, I think your your uh, is it your daughter is in Mary Poppins. Uh, it's over now, but yeah, she was. Okay. Wow, so, look at but, you, Jefferson Graham, know, knowing the knowledge. Impressive. <laughs> I'd want it. I would be video first. Mm -hmm. I would want to get the entire number and some stills, and uh, so it's either bring two phones or do it the the, the way that right. I, I mentioned today, right? Yeah. This is uh this is really good stuff, but I can't let you uh, really and I, I don't know if you're seeing the chat at all, but you'll see if you go back and look, everybody is trying what you're doing right now. Uh there's their suge your suggestions are being implemented immediately. Yeah. And they're all really excited <laughs> uh about it. So thank you for providing these. By the way, for New Year's Eve pictures, not that you have to be and I think the weather is going to be kind of funky for New Year's Eve anyway, but that you have to be at a party or a gathering, but just to, you know, for New Year's Eve or birthdays or whatever, or just, you know, around with a friend and you want to take a picture. Um, I like the live feature that they have where you, it gets a few frames on either side, because if somebody has their eyes closed or, you know, for the instant that there's the shutter release, this gives you a little wiggle room. Don't you, Jeff, do you use okay, that as so well? The live feature is the best unsung tool on the iPhone. Okay, and that's that's iPhone specific. Uh, it was in, it was uh, I think unleashed about five years ago as a way of giving you three seconds of video with your photo, right. and they'll pick the photo, but you can go in afterwards, hit the edit button, and they go into live, and you could select the frame, and that's I did really not cool. Know that. which is, okay, which Mark yeah, is it's the about. best. It's the best. And, but it can also you could take pictures of the ocean and turn the water into this silky flowing water that's out of this world. You can take it to France, as I did recently, and make people disappear that are standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. You can uh, get cars streaking down the street as, as for, you know, little colors, um, which is a lot of fun. There's so many things you could do with it, and it's free. Yeah, it, it's awesome, and uh, I know we're running out of time. Okay, let me let me get to. Um, I was going to just tell you, I was on a a vacation, and they had this uh, 
just they had a Jefferson Graham kind of guy. That's the way he was advertised there. He was going to give you tips on, and I love what you just said. That's why this is this story is related to that. That's the best unsung uh, t- um, uh, feature of uh, iPhone. And so he's going to give you tips and kind of do what J- does Jeff does here. And he goes, oh, so this is this, and blah blah blah. This is that, and these are most of people are people I would say that are not really hip to the technology. And he said, and, um, somebody asked, what's the live feature? And he said, oh, that's really just a video thing. He said, you don't really need it. You can just disable it. I, and I'm what? thinking, are you kidding? That's the best thing on there when you're taking a picture. You're out of your mind. So I reluctantly raised my hand and I said, I don't know. I use the live fi- feature and then I explain, you know, how it's good for photos. I didn't even know the, the Paris stuff that, that Jeff did with the live feature is really cool. You'll have to go back and see it. Yeah. But it's amazing how you say it. It's not well known it's a hidden feature that really is a great tool when taking pics yeah, yeah. it's wonderful all right um, what are you gonna play, uh, you gonna uh, play uh, for I, us i just want to say that my newsletter this weekend i'll have a whole bunch of tips um uh, beyond three so be sure to subscribe and, and read and uh and, and hit me up with any questions i'm gonna play my favorite new year's eve song i love it here we go <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put it together for Jefferson Grant, everyone. Come on, Jefferson Graham. Love it. Good stuff. Thank you. See Jefferson happy New Graham. Year. Yeah, happy, happy New, New Year, Year to you, happy my New friend. Year Thanks to you. for being such a great friend to this show. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. Uh, love your visits and love the information. Uh, you're really someone who always elevates the show. So I appreciate you being here. Thanks, Jefferson Graham. Thank Thanks, you. buddy. All right. Jefferson Graham, everybody. The Mark Thompson Show. It's all happening. How about it, Tony? We got time for some uh, shout outs. What do you think? Thanks, Tony. Yeah. yeah. Sure. No? Sure. We Ready can to go? also. Um, How would you want to do it? Um, actually, you let's wanna... move. We'll, we'll move it to. We'll do it at 11, 1130. Sorry. And uh, 1150 at the end of the show. Let's do that. Okay. 1130. We'll just do it 11... after the news here. We'll just kind of push the 1030s to, to 11. Is what we'll do. Okay. Good. Uh, Thanks, Tony. 10, all right. To, to 11, 30, 11, 50. Got it. Got it. No problem. All right. You're so, not derailing um, the whole show because people actually want to see the show and stuff. So. Okay. That, that'll, that'll work. Um, I don't know if you saw this story out of the East Bay, but I really like it in Concord. Concord, for those who are not in the Bay Area, it's a... Uh, it's a suburban community in the East Bay, right? Would you, is that a fair way to uh, yeah. characterize it? Absolutely. Uh, there's a woman with a rare genetic disease, and she was going to be, I mean, she was facing deportation under the last administration. Uh, she, under the new administration now, with uh, President Biden, uh, will be protected. In fact, he signed a law yesterday allowing her to continue treatments that she could only get in this country. Uh, Isabel Bueso is her name. She's 27. And this bill, H.R. 785, allows her and her parents to remain legally in the country. Uh, I should show you a picture of her, only I didn't think ahead to do that. So um, she's in a wheelchair. She travels in a wheelchair, and she's, you know, wheelchair bound. Mm -hmm. And this uh, genetic disorder is permanent. And so she's doing the... uh, work of getting therapy in this country to make her life manageable. She came to the U.S. from Guatemala for treatment. It was part of a medical trial. It's called Maratolamy syndrome. It's a rare enzyme disorder that prevents cells from breaking down and processing sugars, apparently. And the joint abnormalities that result from this uh, have left her, you know, in this state. And she's graduated summa cum laude from Cal State East Bay. Wow. Yeah. So she's, I mean, she's done a lot with her life is the point. And she says, there are no words to express our feelings and gratitude for giving us the opportunity to create a solid future in this country. I hope that more people can get the relief like I did and that this will inspire others to know that there are members, there are members of Congress who can help them. Um, 
again, under the last administration, she was really looking at deportation, but now she will be in this country, which is, so it's really kind of good news. I mean, news. that's a life or death. Like, she's not here, she's not alive. That's yeah. it. That's exactly right. Cigarette use in America during the pandemic. Cigarette use in America. Did more people smoke or did fewer people smoke during the pandemic? Cigarette use in America, up or down? I ask you, Kim, you can recuse yourself if you know the answer. There, I don't. There was stress during the pandemic, but also people were concerned about respiratory illnesses and breathing. I'm going to say it was down. It was down, you think? Yeah. Tony, what do you think? Up or down, cigarette use in America during the pandemic? I'm thinking down, because everyone switched to weed. Mm. <laughs> the answer indeed is down. That's yeah. right. Well done. Cigarette use in America dropped 20% during the pandemic. The over 65 group, though, smoked 30% more after COVID erupted. So they, the 65-year-olds 65 65 and older, that demographic did maybe feel the pinch of the stress, you know. People smoked significantly less during the COVID pandemic than before. Sales of the tobacco products and tobacco products generally dropped 22% during the first two years. Uh, smokers could be at an increased risk of COVID complications, as Kim was saying, and maybe that's one of the reasons. Yeah. But um, the report comes as U.S. regulators target the tobacco and vape industries in an effort to curb rates of smoking. Uh, there is no research showing definitively that smoking cigarettes boosts a person's uh, risk of serious COVID complications, but doctors did warn smokers that you're at higher risk. Yeah. Smoking damages the airways of the lungs and can cause breathing issues for longtime users. I thought it was interesting, though, that that... Uh, 65 year old group actually increased their smoking purchases by americans between ages 25 and 44 fell and sales dropped among people 45 to 64 elderly residents actually smoked more though during COVID, even though they suffered the more um intense risks and complications from the virus generally right i mean the older demographic had uh well they were they were warned right so anyway Shout out to all the older boys and girls. We love you. You have a friend in the show. But uh, <laughs> got to put the cigarettes down, I guess. And that's the thing. When we come back, David uh, Katz joins us. The former assistant U.S. attorney will weigh in on the SCOTUS decision. We'll talk about Mark Meadows destroying documents, legal exposure for those associated with conspiracy and a cover-up. Meantime, smash the like button like a boss. Smash it with your iron rod. Hit the thumbs up. And uh, show us a little love. We will also ask you to go to Patreon and PayPal through our main website, themarkthompsonshow.com, and make a donation of any sort. Uh, and at the end of the show, we post everybody's name who has made a donation because we're so grateful. It's how we do it now because we've been demonetized. So for the moment, we have to ask you to do that. Themarkthompsonshow.com. Much to do, full hour ahead as we continue. Mark Thompson Show. <laughs> The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by tax attorney Steve Moskowitz at 888-TAX-DEAL. There he is, former President Trump gloating now about the House January 6th committee's decision to withdraw its subpoena of him. On his Truth Social platform, Trump said the committee withdrew the subpoena probably, quote, because they knew I did nothing wrong or they were about to lose in court, end of quote. The Democrat-led committee said Trump's testimony would no longer be needed since the panel's investigation into last year's Capitol riot is now coming to an end. It's guns, a deal for potential $180 million arms sale to Taiwan, is being approved 
by the Biden administration. The State Department says the deal includes the sale of anti-tank mine laying systems and related equipment as well. This comes as China is increasingly asserting territorial claims over Taiwan. Here comes round two, more Bay Area storms on the way after a brief break from the wet weather. Another round of incoming storms could dump the heaviest rains in the North Bay Mountains and the coastal regions. Areas north of San Francisco could see four to six inches of rainfall today through New Year's Eve. More precipitation is forecast January 2nd through the 4th. So we are not done with all of this. Get rid of the picture. That's where my pictures end this time around. But (laughs) sorry, that's that's all I had time to do. But San Franciscans are being encouraged to take part in the city's annual Christmas tree recycling program. Residents can place clean, unflocked trees on the curb the night before scheduled collection days, January 2nd through the 13th. This is the 36th year the Bay Area household Christmas trees will be turned into useful mulch. The metaverse is off to an ominous start after virtual reality headset sales shrank in 2022. Sales in the U.S., yes, they declined 2% year over year to $1.1 billion. So companies like Apple and Meta are investing big money into the VR market. But will people want that? Don't know. And Mm. here's a, uh, you know, speaking of the game show sounder, the percentage of U.S. (laughs) adults who drink. What's the percentage? Oh, uh, the percentage of... Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to say um, U.S. adults who drink over the last two years. This is a percentage over the last two years. uh, 70 percent. That's pretty good. Tony. No, Tony. Tony. Tony's thinking. Thanks, Tony. Uh, he's oh Tony's so, dealing with David. Tony's uh, lining up David Katz. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well I'm going with uh, okay. I'll a lot of people in the chat weighing yeah, in. Yeah, let's see. Forty two percent says Natalie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will uh, Bill says eighty uh, yeah. percent. Forty percent says Ricky. Huge in Japan says seventy eight percent. Kind of what I said. No, uh, pers- somebody said seventy. Yeah. What's yeah. the uh, what's the, the answer? The answer is the percentage of U.S. adults who say they drink alcohol averaged sixty five percent over wow. the last two years. So you are pretty close. Thank it's you. A, yeah, it's according to a semi annual poll from Gallup, which also mm. found thirty six percent of respondents describe themselves as total abstainers. You, you get nothing. You know, I know I don't go into anything, drink. but uh, wow. 37% uh, of people total abstainers. 36% huh. say they don't 36. drink anything at all. Yeah. Mm. Good Those for them. Those numbers have been more or less consistent since the, ni- since the 1980s. In the 70s, though, alcohol use spiked to 71%. In 1958, that number dipped to 58%. Mm. So right now we're hovering about 65%, you know. I have a little glass of wine tonight. This report sponsored by tax attorney Steve Moskowitz. For more than 30 years, Steve has put his tax knowledge to work for individuals and for businesses. If you need help with your taxes, you can check in with Steve at 888-TAX-DEAL. You can also find him online at moskowitzllp.com. I'm Kim McAllister on The Mark Thompson Show. They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. Do you feel it? It's the Mark Thompson Show. This is Mark Thompson. Ralph Gator just sent me a book. Did he send you one too? What he's got going here is a situation. Put up your pants, my man. Pull up those pants. You cannot say you love your country. Let me kick down the door and talk to my stupid sons and daughters. Don't make us beg. 
subscribe, like, and share The Mark Thompson Show. Why are you yelling? It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. What's a guilty pleasure you have? Where are my weed smokers at? What up, everybody? It is the Thursday show. We're excited you're here. Thank you for smashing the like button. And if you're watching or listening on YouTube, smash it, with your iron smash it like a boss. We uh, want to uh, bring in a guy now who is the um, Tony. That's what we're doing now, right? We're bringing in David. Uh, don't we have to thank the people? Let's well, I'm, I, I'm asking Tony because Tony oh. is watching the. What do we do, Tony? Uh, uh, Tony, you decide. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Let's just. Uh, Let's just push yeah. tomorrow. We yeah, we, we do this thing. Get David's here. Let's do David now. Okay, that's let's good. Say, so this is Tony that, yeah. is stepping up to the producer role because Albert is away today. So Thanks, Tony. yeah, really, he is yeah. really doing the job. So now without any further delay, then uh, we go to a guy who is the assistant U.S. attorney and gives us the real lowdown on everything legal and law related. A breakdown on the courts, breakdown on SCOTUS, breakdown on uh, obstruction of justice, and all the things that we've now sort of have to become quasi conversant with. How about for David Katz, everyone. Yeah. David, you look good. And this, uh, you know, if you're a gambling man, you might have get, bet against this uh, connection being so good, but you look terrific, my friend. Well, it's great to be with all of you. Yeah. Uh, David sounds great, too. All right. So uh, there's so much to get to, and I'll let you lead us to what you feel are some of the major um, legal landmarks of uh, the last week or so. I know there was a major SCOTUS ruling. I know there is uh, the, the Meadows a destruction of uh, documents. I mean, I think that uh, that would suggest a, a clear obstruction of justice, although I also see maybe a way that they could wriggle away with it, saying that he wasn't destroying the originals, he was destroying copies or whatever. Uh, take us where you want, and then even if there's time, George George Santos and the lies he told, and now that there there may actually be ways to legally uh, hold him to account for some of these lies he told on the congressional stump. Well, let's uh, take him up with any questions that you have or that your uh, you know viewers and listeners uh, you know have. But I think that the SCOTUS one is really important. I don't think anyone comes out uh, looking great from that. Uh, the uh, you know I basically comment on the legal ramifications, but. Certainly there's a political and policy background. All the years that we've tried to have an accord on immigration, you know, a stiffer border enforcement, but also a pathway to citizenship. And basically the politicians failed, I mean, on both sides um, and they can blame it on each other. And, uh, you know, I tend to blame it on the Republican intransigence uh, and insistence on border security, but we are where we are. And so people in uh, Central America, in Mexico, but in other parts of the world too, have perceived that when Title 42 restrictions are lifted, um, that this will be a boom time to come into the United States. And so one of the problems is you have, apart from all of the law, you have all of these people that are massing along the border that are ready to come in through places like Southern Texas and other parts along the border. And so uh, this was something that Fox could, of course, play to their advantage that there was going to be this inundation, even above the normal numbers that come in, that people were getting ready for Title 42 to be taken off. Now, not to get too into the weeds, but Title 42 is very important. Basically, Trump exploited a very old law uh, to say that there was a health need to not let people come into the country, even asylum seekers. Of course, one of the huge political debates are, are 2% of these people real asylum seekers in the traditional sense, or are 50% of them? Obviously, you feel differently if you think 50% of these people are entitled to asylum of the 2 million deluge that would come in, or do you think that only 1% or 2% would really be entitled to asylum at the end of the day? I don't need to get into that, but the reason that people were not allowed to come in at all and that they were forced to wait outside the United States, even if they were asylum seekers, was because they were health risk under COVID. But the CDC and the Biden administration said, no, we're really past the worst of the COVID pandemic. 
And therefore, the emergency at the border cannot be supported by the emergency under COVID any longer, meaning if there were some other law to keep these people out or to make them go through asylum restrictions either at the border or let's say they had set up a vigorous program down in Mexico to actually vet them. But none of that happened. So from the Republicans' point of view, uh, you know, Biden was in charge. The Democrats controlled both houses of Congress. They had two years. They could see that COVID was diminishing, right? And they didn't do anything about it. From the Democrats' point of view, uh, the Republicans weren't humanitarian. They would never join any program to do anything sensible about this. But here we are. So the Supreme Court, the WAGs say, uh, now have saved the Democrats from themselves. They've saved the Democrats from the political embarrassment of having Fox have nothing but cameras at the border showing this deluge of people coming in wave after wave after wave, day after day. That was about to happen uh, just a few days ago until Chief Justice Roberts first stated. it. And now by a five to four vote, the Supreme Court said, we are not going to allow people in, despite the fact that it looks like the pandemic is over. We're going to keep in place the restrictions on them coming in based on health, even though a lot of people think that that's bogus. Uh, in fact, the four dissenters, one of them was uh, a conservative. One of them was Gorsuch, said that, look, one emergency that we haven't dealt with this deluge that's about to come in cannot be dealt with by another emergency when that emergency COVID restrictions have lapsed. And since there was no policy, Gorsuch and the other three basically said, we're not the policy makers of last resort, we're a court of law. But they lost. The five in the majority have now stopped this, quote, deluge from coming in, this huge invasion that Fox was going to show day after day at the border. And that's why the WAGs say that to some extent, the uh, Supreme Court majority, five to four, has saved the Democrats from themselves. Because one of the ironies is that when this issue came up, you would expect maybe the Biden administration, Mark, would have said, you know what? It's not supported by COVID anymore. This is just a fig leaf. This is just a way to keep all these people out. You need to allow Title 42 to go out, those restrictions to go out. If the people are coming here seeking asylum, let them come. That's not what the Biden administration said. The Biden administration actually welcomed this further stay. And of course, that's back to the original problem that no one has dealt with this deluge that's going to come in. The irony is that some of the countries that people come from are not covered. So not all the countries are covered. And the reason is because when they send the person back to Mexico, will Mexico take them? Mexico will take Mexicans. It will take most of the Central Americans. It won't take the Cubans. It won't take people from all over the world. So those people, ironically, can still come in. But a large, large segment of that, whatever it is, one or two million people that was all primed to cross the border now cannot come in, even if they're a legitimate asylum seeker. That's what the liberals go crazy. How about the ones who are legitimate asylum seekers and can't come in to make their asylum petitions? And yet we've never set up anything effective. You know, if people do a lot of things now by the internet. We haven't set up some way, let's say by the internet, that these people can make their legitimate asylum petitions from abroad. You know, that's totally not been given attention. Well, I mean, you you mentioned so many things here that are so pertinent, and I'll just take the last one. You know, the asylum courts are just clotted, David. There's just there's such a backlog, and you can be legitimately an asylum seeker, and we we can talk about this more, as you say, you know, another time without getting too much into the weeds. But I mean, these people are fleeing legitimate threats that might fall legitimately into the category of uh, them ending up as asylees, but they are never going to get their day in court just because the court system is so backed up. Uh, similarly, you make such a good point about the the photo ops that Fox News Channel and other, uh, quote, conservative or right-wing media will exploit at the border. But that said, to be fair, we do have a crisis at the border. I mean, those states that are border states are where there really is an influx of um, immigration to the point that those states are being choked off by all of this immigration and these people who are ending up there in you know, different capacities, meaning some of them have places to go, some of them don't. I mean, the stories can be heart-wrenching and they can also be disturbing and they can also involve violence. Uh, I'm sympathetic on some level to uh, this crisis. And as you correctly identify, we have not taken, neither party has taken an aggressive posture. Instead, they've used this crisis at the border for political ends. And 
uh, we end up where we are. I, I do have a kind of a technical question because I'm just curious. Uh, how does SCOTUS, uh, on what legal um, hook do they hang uh, keeping these Title 42 restrictions in place? Well, our courts sit both in law and what was called equity. And in equity, uh, courts are allowed to do something that's just fair in the situation, even though it might not be spelled out precisely in the law. So the Supreme Court also sits as a court of equity. And when you're going to issue an injunction or a stay, you have to look at the likely merits. In other words, what side's going to win and what side's going to lose. I, I would say, just looking at this as a lawyer, I think that the Republican governors that have brought this action and have gotten the stay, I think they're likely to lose because immigration is a federal responsibility and it's a congressional responsibility. So I think they're going to lose on the merits. But one of the other things that's balanced is the harms, the balance of harms. And I guess when you look at the balance of harms, if they were right, let's say the governor of Texas uh, were correct, um, uh, some of the other people that this this huge mass of people are going to go into their states, uh, uh, those folks uh, can say that they have a very imminent harm, that it's going to start happening if they hadn't granted the stay on December 27th or 28th, whatever day, just a few days ago, it would have otherwise ended and these large number of people would have uh, come into their state. So I think on that level, I think that's what the, to the extent that the five made a principal decision, I think it was that while the Republican governors might not have been that strong on the merits, they were very strong on an imminent harm that if they end up being wrong, okay, so the people will come in in two months because the Supreme Court did say they were going to expedite the case, Mark, and they said they were going to hear it in February. Uh, and as I say, the Biden administration did not go down kicking and screaming, no, no stay, take it off right away, let the people come in. Title 42 is just a fig leaf at this point. There's really no health emergency. That's what I think the liberals would have wanted them to say, but it's not what the Biden administration actually said. And of course, that's because of the tension between the left and the more um, you know, moderate wing of the Democratic Party and how they feel about immigration, public interest from one side, and of course, the humanitarian thing that nobody wants to minimize as you get close to any one of these stories, uh, so many of them are heartbreaking. And the other side of it is that we just can't take in every heartbreaking case in the world. We really would be inundated. Yeah. And so our circumstance and predicament, uh, great, great breakdown. Thank you, David. So we're talking to David Katz, the former assistant U.S. attorney, and I'm looking at different, uh, yeah, there's a political spin to all of this as well. And uh, somebody was making the point that if you let refugees in, uh, they come largely from Latin American countries, strongly Catholic, they're anti-gay, they'll likely end up voting Republican. There's a whole 3D chess that's being played out in the uh, chat. That I'm going to put aside for another time. Uh, I just was curious, and when David's here, I'd like to know about the, the legal machinations on some level. So I, I want to ask you about the Mark Meadows uh, thing, you know, the, the revelations from the J6 committee that Mark Meadows was regularly destroying documents and burning all of these uh, documents, the government documents, so they're the people's uh, uh, property. Uh, so we've seen uh, the last president basically jack, uh, what, 11,000 documents, or was it 11? I don't know how many, you know, he, he took a, a bunch, 1,100, 11,000, whatever it was, um, to Mar-a-Lago and to other places too. We're not even sure where all the documents are or what they all are. That's another controversy. And now Mark Meadows destroying these documents. Uh, that seems to me to be obviously a cover-up, but might there be legal high ground for him? And what will likely be his legal exposure? Well, Mark Meadows is in trouble on a lot of other fronts. He was the last uh, White House chief of staff. Um, he seemed to have been a real cheerleader for the coup. Um, he sent a lot of um, messages, uh, both that came into him, but also that went out from him that are going to get him, I think, in a lot of trouble. Um, he also defied his subpoena, but he was one of those people who was not prosecuted for contempt. And now when you add to that, he's also got trouble down in Georgia because he was sent into Georgia as the emissary uh, for Trump during that famous uh, find me 11,000 um, uh, more votes, uh, which meant concoct those votes down in Georgia. And then Meadows went down there along with Giuliani. So Meadows is in real trouble on many, many fronts. I think that he probably has quite a few uh, criminal defense attorneys uh, on his payroll right now trying to figure out what to do. And now he's got this latest 
um, uh, you know, this, this latest hit from Cassidy Hutchinson describing the fact, and she ought to know, um, that he was putting uh, documents in the uh, White House uh, little fireplace there um, at the time that the coup was being plotted. In fact, after two meetings with this congressman, I think his name is um, Scott something, Scott Perry, right. maybe. I want to get I think it. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, he, he was one of the people who was saying that, you know, it could be decided by the states that Pence shouldn't count the votes uh, that came in from the slates, uh, all of that. After two meetings with him, two separate meetings on both of those occasions, Meadows burned documents. That's a terrible look. They didn't have to be presidential records. That would be if he burned presidential records, he would have violated the Presidential Records Act. But if he burned anything that was pertinent, to uh, th this investigation, it looks like it was obstruction of justice. It looks like if we succeed at the coup, I'll have a great memory of it. And if we don't succeed at the coup, I won't leave behind fingerprints or evidence that are going to get me in the uh, penitentiary and it's gonna send Representative Scott Perry maybe there along with me. And, and by the way, Perry is the guy who was also involved in trying to engineer the coup. So as is noted by David Katz, uh, they were, co-conspirers in in our core co-conspiracists whatever the word is uh in in all of this conspirators conspirators, conspirators. thank you very much that uh, seems like a ding word yeah um so uh, so he's you think in a world of legal trouble and when you say that you don't mean look he's broken the law i mean that seems on its face to be the case but you mean also that he's likely to be held to account by the law I think that Meadows is one of the ones at this point likely to be indicted by the special prosecutor. I think that they'll see that he's one of the logical links in the chain that goes up to Trump. I think they'll try to flip him along with Giuliani. You know, Meadows may not be as loyal uh, to Trump as people think. And of course, as soon as Trump's star starts to diminish, which I think it is, and people see that he, see, as long as they see that he really might be the next president, they're looking forward to the pardon. Even someone like the Oath Keeper, uh, Rhodes, he hopes that you know by 2024, uh, Trump will be back in office and he can pardon him. He might do a few years in jail before then. But you know, what's his motive to flip? If he flips on Trump, like if Meadows flips on Trump, they burn the only bridge that was left. Um, as long as Trump's around and has the pardon power, Mark, right? They figure, okay. Um, that's my that's my ace in the hole. But I think that is becoming less and less of a possibility. I don't see somebody like, uh, let's say, DeSantis. DeSantis won't owe them anything. It's got to be Trump himself to win, to give them the pardon, I'm pretty sure. And I think that they're beginning to realize, I mean, it's. I'm a criminal defense attorney now. I do a lot of federal cases. It is a powerful thing when the feds say that you're a target and they go after you with the FBI agents or our IRS agents or both of them in the same case, which is what I have often. And, you know, I try to present the best defense I can, and hopefully the facts and the law are on my side, and I try to develop what I can. But it is not an easy thing for someone like Meadows when you have five or six different levels of criminal investigation that could all put you in jail, and you have this huge pressure, and I'm sure his lawyers will tell him that one thing that he could do is to flip and tell what he really knows about Trump. And if somebody like Meadows did that, it would be so valuable to the prosecutor. You can't really imagine that Meadows would ever serve a day in jail if he could provide credible testimony with corroboration against a former president that would make sure. a case against him. Um, it, I, I don't know how many people, even if they're angry at what Meadows did, thinks that that's not fair. If he really testifies honestly, thoroughly, in the opinion of a federal judge, should Meadows really go to jail at this stage in his life? if he makes amends in that way. And I think that that's what a lot of his lawyers are telling him. He may have other lawyers. Remember this Cassidy Hutchinson had a Trumpy lawyer and she eventually right. got rid of her Trumpy lawyer. And now he's potentially in trouble for some of the Trumpy advice that he may have given her, which was in Trump's best interest, but not in Miss Cassidy Hutchinson. Well, he was suggesting that she perjure herself. I mean, I mean, suggesting that she lie. I mean, uh, is essentially, which will, I guess, get you disbarred at minimum. Um, I want to put the Santos thing to aside till uh, we visit next week, but I love this conversation as usual, David. You broke down the SCOTUS decision so well and this Meadows exposure. Such a, a treasure to have you. I really appreciate you being part of things. Uh, we inherited you from Pat Thurston, and it was her best gift to us for this past year. Thank you. Happy New Year, and we'll talk next week. Happy New Year to you and everyone else on your show, and great to be with you, Mark. All right. David Katz, everybody. Yeah.
Good, good stuff. David Katz. The Mark Thompson Show. And now give it up for Steve Moskowitz, everyone. Just want to get a quick conversation with Steve. And so, Steve, I was mentioning, I mean, you're the tax ninja, of course. And the the new codes, the old codes, how tax advantages can accrue to so many who are watching and listening. Uh, this is your world. And I want to just ask you a very basic question, but I was just talking about this with somebody last night. The C Corp and the S Corp. Uh, uh, yes. expl- yeah. Can you explain the Absolutely. distinction? Okay. So Keep it simple, all, please. Why yeah. does a small business want to become a corp at all? Most of them do it for something called limited liability. So that means suppose you don't pay your supplier or your rent, they can't come after you personally. That's why most people become corporations. There's also some other advantages with pensions and things. So there's a bunch of advantages. Also advantages with succession planning, estate planning. But what's the difference between a C and an S? When you just form a corporation, you're all, you're automatically a C. That's what all the big corporations are. But the problem with a C is the C pays tax on its profits. And then when a distribution is made to the owners, the owners pay tax. So there's double taxation. Mm. So there's something called an S election. You make an S election and you elect, it'd be nice to be this our person, you elect not to be taxed as a corporation. So the corporation <laughs> says, isn't that nice? Then why wouldn't everyone uh, be no the S? S election well, for Kim, individuals, Mark. Kim's there. right. Why wouldn't everybody go S? There, well, some people don't qualify. For example, oh. if there's more than 100 shareholders, you can't have it. If there's a foreigner in there, you can't have it. And there are some limited, very limited circumstances where a C is more advantageous, but they're limited. Mm. So most small businesses do go S. And what you're supposed to do is elect it within 75 days of incorporating or 75 days of the next year. However, the IRS will accept a late extension so if you're watching if you're watching this show and you say oh my god i don't have any more reason to live because i'm a c and i wish i had elected s you do have a reason to live because you make uh, as long as you haven't filed the return you can make a late s election so what happens is the corporation pays no taxes and the income or the loss flows through to the individual so with a small business suppose you had a loss if you're a c corporation the loss is stuck there as an s Suppose your spouse worked, you can offset your loss against your spouse's income. There's all kinds of good reasons to be wow. an S. Wow. What's the difference between an S and an LLC? There are different forms of, of entities. So the S is an actual corporation, and the LLC is a limited liability company. And the, the rules with the LLC are not as strict as a corporation. And that's also what's known as a flow through entity. So then if you want to get a little technical, remember I told you there's, there's an election. It's so exciting, isn't it? Remember I told you there's an election <laughs> where you can go ahead and only pay 80% taxes and profits. So if, you, if you've made a million bucks, you can make an election where you say, I'm only, I elect, I only have to pay tax on 800 rather than a million. C Corps can't do that, but S Corps okay. and LLCs can. Okay. All right. Uh, this is great. I hate to say it, but I'm actually intrigued by this whole conversation. You see, taxes can be really interesting. 888 Tax Deal to read Steve Mosco. It's triple A T A X D E A L. 888 Tax Deal. Steve is waiting for you. Mosco, it's LLP.com. Wherever you are in the country, not just around the Bay Area, not just in California, wherever you are. Steve can help you. 888 Tax Deal. And again, Moskowitz, LLP.com. Steve, great stuff. We'll talk tomorrow. Thanks, my friend. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Uh, Steve Moskowitz, my friends. Yes. Good, good stuff. Uh, Sad news. Yeah, sad news about Pele dying. You know, Pele is uh, probably the greatest soccer player to uh, to ever grace the game. Brazilian yeah. king of football, won a record three <laughs> World Cups. Yeah, he passes away at eighty-two. Um, the standard bearer of quote the beautiful game, as he called it, had undergone treatment for colon cancer since twenty twenty-one. He'd been hospitalized for the last month with multiple ailments. 
Widely regarded as one of football's greatest players, Pele spent nearly two decades enchanting fans and dazzling opponents, they say. As the game's most prolific scorer with Brazilian club Santos and the Brazil national team, look at him there. And I, and I have to say, as now football, you know, uh, soccer has become so very popular in America as we knew it would as generations changed. This guy made it even on the radar in America back when we were kids. Incredible. Yeah. So a uh, sad loss, but um, Pele is, uh, has passed away at 82. So uh, we have to call an audible here. Belinda is waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, we have shout outs to do, although we could bump them to tomorrow, I think Tony would might want to say to do that. All right, let's just, uh, bump, we can bump shout outs to tomorrow. Yeah, the show, the, I mean, so we haven't hit news yet. And we haven't hit news. We have Belinda waiting too, but I think we should do it. I think we should do Turbo News. Can we do that, uh, Kim? Do turbo, news. Kind of yep. turbo News. We'll do, we'll do a, um, a quick newscast. And then uh, I do want to talk to Belinda. It's Thursdays and we do uh, It's the yep. Planet, Stupid. So uh, smash the like button Master for everything that's happened today. David Katz and uh, all the good information from Jefferson Grant. Smash it with your iron rod. You get it and everything else in between. And, um, and we'll take a quick uh, break for news and then uh, on to uh, Belinda. And it's the yep. Planet, Stupid. Thanks for being here. Okay, it's the Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. On The Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by tax attorney Steve Moskowitz at 888-TAX-DEAL. And of course, Mark just mentioned it, but international soccer star Pele is dead at the age of 82. He died in Brazil after being hospitalized with cancer. Pele considered by many to be the greatest soccer player in history, claiming more than 1,000 goals. The forward won his first World Cup at age 17 and would do so two more times, the only player with such a trophy count. New Yorkers are calling on Congress to investigate Congressman-elect George Santos after admitting he embellished his resume. Embellished? Mm, more like liar, liar, you're fired on the uh, sign there. Community members and leaders banded together in front of the Nassau County Courthouse earlier today, including Democrat Robert Zimmerman, who ran against Santos in his congressional district. Rally attendees could be seen holding signs that read, do not reward a liar, and you should repent, not represent. Earlier this week, Santos admitted to lying about his education, his employment, and his religious background, but he says he has no intentions to step away from Congress. Elon Musk, Tesla CEO, telling employees, don't be too bothered by all this stock market craziness. Tesla shares down almost 70% for the year on their way to the worst month, quarter, and year in the electric car company's history. In a company-wide email yesterday, Musk told staffers, long-term, he believes very much Tesla will be the most valuable company on Earth. And speaking of tech and Musk, NASA is using a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule as a backup to get some International Space Station crew members home. A Russian Soyuz capsule docked with the station sprung a coolant leak earlier this month that uh, was supposed to bring back two cosmonauts and one american astronaut at the beginning of the year but again it sprung a leak so now they may have to use the spacex dragon what mm -hmm. bit yeah. of a training mishap no fun a yeah. veteran new orleans cop apparently needs some more training with his gun the officer accidentally shot himself in the leg where he's what? an instructor <laughs> yeah at the training academy is where this happened where he's an instructor the officer who has not been named was rushed to the hospital a spokesman for the department didn't say what exactly happened but did say this whole thing is under investigation how happy and is he that he wasn't named <laughs> oh god 
How embarrassing. I mean, I think maybe a reassignment is in order. Yeah. George Clooney, you two, Gladys Knight, among the artists recognized at this year's Kennedy Center honors the 45th annual awards presented last night in D.C. Remind will- me to tell you uh, about mm. my Kennedy Center honors trip. About not not today. That? Yes, okay. I do. I was at the Kennedy Center honors and somebody I was the date of somebody famous. Oh, oh, oh. was it? I know. Wait. I can't wait to share it, but it I'll Shaka do it. Khan? I have to I have to do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> this report sponsored by tax attorney Steve Moskowitz. For more than 30 years, Steve, who we adore, has put his tax knowledge to work for individuals and businesses alike. If you see how excited he gets over C and S corporations and LLCs, <laughs> you know he's your guy, right? You can call Steve at 888-TAX-DEAL or you can find him online at moskowitzllp.com. I'm Kim McAllister on The Mark Thompson Show. The planet Earth. Some call me nature. I am very passionate about the planet Earth. A living, breathing planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Spock, judging by the pollution content of the atmosphere, I believe we have arrived. It's the planet stupid. No, no, no. It's the planet stupid. It might be the planet stupid, but it's definitely the planet stupid. It is our segment with Belinda Weymouth. Welcome, Belinda. Good morning, good morning. How good is morning, everybody? Good morning, good hey, morning. Everybody's uh, pretty well. Yeah, I think we're all doing okay, right, Cam? You're doing okay. Yeah, How are you? Yeah, yeah all right. all's well okay. over here. Um, Belinda, uh, share with us uh, what the hell is going on. We're in a, the, the, <laughs> the world is in a desperate scramble for energy in Europe, as you know, with the yes. winter having arrived and with the... Uh, Russian supplies of natural gas limited. Uh, there is a scramble to uh, produce energy, and I'm seeing that uh, Germany, for example, is continuing to uh, phase out nuclear, but then you're getting now real pushback on the other side saying, wait, you can't phase out nuclear as planned anymore because look at the crisis we're dealing with energy. Uh, I see this, this energy issue increasingly uh, taking center stage through the winter. Yeah, yeah, the energy issue is huge. And I mean, we really, you know, here's the thing about energy that we have to remember is that as the climate gets hotter, we're going to need more energy. We're going to be using, you know, more air conditioning for these hot summers. And if we're not using clean, renewable energy to power those air conditioners, we are just exacerbating and making the planet hotter. So we really have to use renewables. Well, and- it's a great point. You can, I don't, uh, exacerbating, thank you, it's a ding word. But I, the point I wanted to make to, uh, to what you've just said is Germany, for example, is burning the most uh, dirty coal, uh, if not the most, I mean, cl- maybe the second most dirty coal, uh, to fill in the gap on nuclear. That's why the Germany conversation about uh, taking nuclear plants offline has become so reanimated. Because if yeah. you really care about the environment, they're saying, well, then why are you burning all this coal? This doesn't make any sense. You're going to take the nukes offline, but you're going to burn the dirty coal. You know, you see it. Yeah, no, no, it, it should be the other way, other way around. And as you know, you know, I'm not a big fan of nuclear, but, you know, here's the thing. Nuclear is, you know, not putting CO2 into the atmosphere. Dirty coal is. And the other horrible thing that's happening in Europe is that, you know, they want to burn wood in power plants. Well, don't be burning something where carbon is sequestered, you know, or, you know, in wood and then putting more CO2 into the atmosphere. And, you know, as you know, here in California, you know, we just had Biden step in and, you know, give a billion dollars to the Diablo Canyon power plant here, you know, our last remaining nuclear power plant uh, in California to, and and Newsom was all for it, you know, rather than it being retired in 2025, it's like, no, we need to keep it going till 2030. And the thing about Diablo, you know, it provides 8% of California's uh, electricity, but 17% of our, you know, renewable clean energy. So nuclear if it's already existing, you know, yes, I, I, you know, I sort of, um, you know, can't, um, can't believe I'm saying it, but yeah, it has to be part of the picture because it's not putting CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. And that's what we have to be concentrated on. All right. So that's that. What else do you have for us today? Oh, Mark, it's a really long list of stuff. So, you know, 
what I said last week was, why don't we talk about the good things that happened in 2022? And um, and I, I have to say, this is pretty US centric, um, you know, and obviously we, we talked a lot about COP24 and, you know, what happened there. But, you know, the biggest thing that happened in the US, and it was a huge message also to the rest of the world, was the Inflation Reduction Act, which earmarked, you know, it was the most transformational clean energy bill in history, $370 billion, you know, towards renewables, transition to renewables. There was an extra $60 billion to go to environmental justice issues. So this was really enormous, you know, uh, huge, huge, huge. And Biden should get... <laughs> I think a lot of popularity points for it, but you know that's that's a whole other issue. But you know, here's the thing: so we've got now more solar being manufactured on U.S. soil than ever before. Experts say, you know, there has never been a better time to invest in domestic solar manufacturing. And this year, uh, 2022, there was a record number: 27,000 people attended uh, a solar trade show that happened in Anaheim. Now it was the first in years because you know because of COVID there haven't been trade shows, so it was the first since 27, 2019, excuse me, uh, that people could gather and see all that's on offer. And you know it's big. You know so it, this is really big. We are making this transition, and one of the things that was included in the um, Inflation Reduction Act were all these things to uh, incentivize households. So one of them is a, uh, a rooftop solar uh, tax credit. 30% of the total cost of installation, you'll get back in tax credits. Um, you'll also get 30% towards uh, a tax credit if you need to upgrade your electricity panel in order to install the solar. You'll also get a 30% tax credit for battery storage that you install. Um, and so, you know, this is big. You know, we, we saw California this year because of the push from utilities sort of pull back on incentives that the state was providing for uh, homeowners to get their own solar. But the federal government is stepping in and saying, no, this is, you know, this is what we need to do. And the savings, obviously, on your electricity are huge. You get immunity to blackouts. And then if you're switching appliances in your house, and, and I get, as I say all this stuff, that not. Oh, we lost her. She dropped yeah, out for a, a second. A, a, there she is. Oh, did you lose me? Oh, you dropped out. You said, but you said, but uh, there are all these benefits, and then you then you dropped out. Oh well, well. So, you know, one of the things I wanted to say, and I think it's really important, is you know, I do realize when I say, hey, if you switch all your appliances to you know electrical ones, that not every household can do that. But I'm just going to you know paint you know kind of big picture stuff because one of the other things. Um, that people can do on a personal level, which, you know, saves them money and they also get this 30% tax credit if they do it, is uh, installing heat pumps. And uh, heat pumps, you know, they are powered by electricity, so that's good. And the thing about them also is, you know, they're also air conditioners, so they work, you know, in two good ways. And when they're called, you know, heat pumps, they're not actually a heater. You know, what a heat pump does is it moves heat around. It's not using energy to create heat. So they're three to five times more efficient than a traditional. Oh, what, what are they? Well, the, so uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a long time. Uh -oh. it's, it's a long Okay. <laughs> but I mean, no, but, but I'd say I want to put a heat pump in the house. What am I saying? I want to put what what's coming into the house. So what you have with a heat pump is you have this thing on the wall and it's basically a heat mover and it does connect uh, to a device outside. But what it will do is say it's a, you know, it's a hot muggy night and the, the, the heat inside the house, you know, has been trapped and stayed in there. A heat pump will swap it out for the cool air that's outside. And so is it a fan or is it a, it's a smart fan or what is it? It sort of works like a fan. I mean, the thing about them is they're very quiet, a heat pump. They have an outside uh, component, and that's the where the whirring and all that side kind of stuff goes on. What they look like is a unit in the wall, like a big sort of bigger air conditioner. But um, uh, they... 
Oh, if you have, you've never been in a hotel room where you've got a remote and you push it. You, you, yeah, you, of you course, know. of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the so the little vents on it open, and and then it starts. You know, if the room is too hot, it will. You know, it'll start moving that hot air out, replacing I see. the cold air outside. I don't know. I knew you'd ask me the actual workings of them. I know. Well, that I just they, didn't know what a heat when you say you know these heat pumps are great and you get a the credit. I'm thinking oh, I don't know what it is, so I don't know. I yeah, just yeah. thought we should start there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. No. Absolutely. Well, okay. it well it looks like an air conditioner but it's not doing what an air conditioner does what it's doing is it's moving the hot air masses around and replacing them with cold if it's too hot inside and then you know vice versa Got and it. using a lot less energy um so you know they're they're pretty amazing because one of the you know things with heating so if you if you change to a heat pump you can save up to $1,200 on heating bills a year. And they are stopping one to eight metric tons of carbon going up into the atmosphere every year. And just for comparison, if you go vegan, you save one metric ton of carbon. But if you go heat pump, you can save up to eight. Wow. So they're pretty major. And of course, there's a lot of misinformation out there. You know, people are saying, you know, heat pumps don't work in cold temperatures, blah, blah, blah. You have to get someone who's really reputable and knowledgeable if you are going to install a heat pump. But one of the things they can do in cold temperatures, I just read this, you know, they can heat a home even if it's minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, they wow. are. Oh, I have to look into them myself. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It seems like uh, that might be. We have... Uh, listeners and viewers in cold weather states as well, so it might be the yeah. thing. But but we're a we're a hot weather state in California, so it might be appropriate here as well. We only have the another minute or two, oh. a couple of minutes. Oh, so I want to I do, oh, well, just okay, want to keep so you moving. Nice. I got to I I, I want to talk about heat pumps. They seem sexy and cool, but I, I got to get you to the rest of the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's so there's so many things. So so a study just came out, which I thought was pretty cool saying that uh, if there are climate warnings on a fast food menu, customers are 23% less likely to order the beef if it says beside the beef, hey, this, you know, is going to contribute to climate change if you eat this, you know, beef hamburger. And uh, customers are 10% more likely to opt for chicken or fish when those items are marked as climate friendly. So, so I think that, you know, consumer choices and knowledge, I think all those things are on the rise. And then we've got this, you know, huge, um, uh, uh, you know, all these, you know, millennials and Gen Zers, you know, I mean, they came out to vote. You know, we had, you know, almost a third of 18 to 29 year olds who cast ballots in 2022. And they're very concerned about the climate. And they're the people who are reading these menus and going, oh, hey, maybe I'm not going to have a regular hamburger. Maybe I'll have an impossible burger, um, you know, because of the effect that it has on the climate. So I think those things are good. I and think then, that's a really good point, too, because you may think uh, those of you watching and those of us who I know, all my friends, they wouldn't give a damn about something on the menu, but, you know, they're going to order their steak or whatever, no matter what. But Gen Zs and, and millennials probably a little more sensitive to that and to the effects on the environment. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it, it's interesting. Things. I don't know what restaurants will put that in a menu, but but that said, still that information, it just in general, uh, those generations may be more sensitive to it. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 No. And the other thing also was that they were energized to come out and vote, which I think is really amazing because the fact that, you know, Democrats held on to the Senate, that's another big thing that happened for the environment. I mean, I know that, you know, uh, Democrats, Democrats lost the House, and that's big. But I feel like, you know, we'll be able to, you know, the Democrats will be able to sort of hold the line, you know, as far as environmental things go, hopefully. You know, I mean, we've still got Joe Manchin trying to get his dirty deal through. But, you know, he keeps on trying to hide it in these other bills, and all these environmental groups are really aware of it. So they keep stopping him. So I think having young voters out there is amazing. And I've got to say, you know, real kudos to our uh, firefighters and to what happened in California in 2022. So in 2022, yes, we did lose 350,000 acres to fires. But in uh, 2020 and 2021, it was a million plus and four million plus acres that burnt. And this year, because of um, 
you know, forest thinning and controlled burns, they were able to really minimize the amount of acreage that was lost to forest fires. And I think that's really big because this stuff is happening, Mark. I mean, you know, you know me, I want to paint the rosiest picture I can, for, you know, for the planet. But we are going to have, you know, the drought's going to continue, the fires are going to continue, but we're getting smarter. And I think that's a really important thing to focus on. And I really, one last thing I want to say is everybody, even though it's been raining, conserving water is super important because hydropower is also a renewable energy source. And as our rivers, you know, the Colorado drives, dries up more, that'll be less hydropower. So conserving water is still super important. Uh, you've said some things that have provoked conversation in the chat. I will put it aside until your next visit, which will be next week. I will note in the chat, all of you who are talking about uh, eating beef and geothermal pumps and other things related to uh, energy, energy conservation, etc. I'll put it all aside, but I will note it. I'll go back and I will note in the chat. So don't worry. I'll bring these things up with Belinda. Maybe you want to take a look at it as well in replay, Belinda, because these are, I think, oftentimes sensible things we talk about. But even as you yourself, and when we started this conversation said, well, uh, look, I'm uh, sensitive to environmental issues, but I'm also sensitive to the needs right now and not taking the nuclear plants offline, for example, in Germany to replace the gap with dirty coal burning. So uh, mm. there are there's a there's a give and take and there are certain realities and practicalities and logistics that have to be respected right now. So I love these conversations because they do take a certain ideal and we try to apply it to the situation and make it uh, practical. So I think that's one of the virtues of this conversation that we have weekly. Uh, we have to wrap up. I want to thank you. It's been a great year. I love that you know, this year brought you good health and I'm counting on the next year doing similarly and our regular weekly visits continuing. I so appreciate you being here. Belinda Weymouth, everybody. Belinda. Uh, thank you so much. And happy, happy new year to everybody. Happy, happy, happy new year indeed. And uh, yeah, we love our Belinda Weymouth. Good stuff. I had a, a close for It's the Planet Stupid. Now I can't find it. Driving me crazy. I don't know. Uh, Tony, I blame you because you're in the, right. because you're, you're already sick. So, I'm feeling uh, guy. It's fine. I got <laughs> you're the filling dude. All right, uh, Blinda Weymouth. Thanks again. Blinda. The Mark Thompson Show. It's the planet stupid. Uh, by the way, uh, I did see something in the chat as we wrap up here about um, the star. Somebody said there's a. I, it was too complicated for me to to get. They said, you know, Mark, that's a Jewish star with the different, uh, I don't know, the multiple, w w the, uh, the different corners. This is a Christmas ornament that was made for me. It's a homemade Christmas ornament. You can see it has my favorite face in the middle, mine. And uh, that's uh, why it's there. But if it's a, um, if it's a Jewish star, I don't know, uh, a great I say, uh, I, you know, I stand with the Jewish people. Right. I stand with the Jewish people with Whoopi. So, it's not uh, a star. It's a snowflake. That's what I thought. I don't know yeah. what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know why we're all concerned about the star, but it's actually a snowflake, I think. Anyway, that, it's, it's, it's in its last days here at the, um, you know, the closing. I know when, when do you take down the... Um... Oh, you're supposed to take all the Christmas stuff down the day after New Year's. Okay, the day after New Year's. So that's yeah. uh, good. Some people have already started, I can see, but yeah, usually you know. this week when people do it, because okay, you yeah. know, next week. Well, we'll have normal. a we'll have a quiet ceremony where we do it. Uh, Al Anonymous says that's not an ornament; it's a shrunken ninja throwing star. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, good stuff. A bro flake says Chris. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um. Yeah, really, really cool. Smash that like button like a boss Smash while you're here. Your Appreciate rod. you watching. If you've come to us um, from iHeartRadio, from KFI Radio, from TYT, however you found us, we appreciate it. Um, my husband just took down all my Christmas stuff. My son's birthday is New Year's Eve, so he usually has mm -hmm. it gone. I see. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my, weird when your birthday's around a major holiday like New Year's mm-hmm. Eve or Christmas because yeah, you don't want you don't want to crowd the family member with the other celebration. So, so my, I have a niece whose birthday is January 9th, and my sister takes the Christmas tree ornaments off and puts birthday ornaments up and turns it into a birthday tree. Oh, that's kind of yeah. nice. That's a great idea. Yeah, cute. Good, good, good. Uh, they still Tony... get Lyft's gifts, don't they? Because <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's still there. This, this is, is your Christmas, Christmas. Cause it's the first thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's acknowledge some people who have made contributions in the month of December through yeah. Patreon and PayPal. Before you put them up, uh, I just want to mention again, our YouTube channel is demonetized. We're losing a lot of money right now. And so the only way we stay on the air is with your help. And I appreciate everybody who contributes any amount, $5, $10, whatever it might be. But some have stepped up with uh, larger amounts as well. And in the month of December, as we really are trying to make up this massive gap as YouTube has demonetized us, and again, not for anything we said, no content, but because of a clerical thing we're trying to work out, we really turn to you, the audience, to keep us on the air. So uh, I want to acknowledge many of you, and again, to make a contribution of any size, you have to now go to Patreon or PayPal, and you do that easily through our website, themarkthompsonshow.com. The Mark Thompson, you see at the bottom of the screen. Want to support the show? Visit themarkthompsonshow.com and click contribute. And when you get to themarkthompsonshow.com, this screen will come up and it'll say contribute uh, Patreon, contribute through PayPal. Whip out a credit card, or if you're already on PayPal, it's easy just to move money. That helps us enormously during this time. There it is. That's what the website looks like. So sadly, we've got to really turn to you to help us out. Contribute to our Patreon, help support us via PayPal. You'll see that there at themarkthompsonshow.com. Now, I want to acknowledge some of the people who have contributed so very much in the month of December. Tony's compiled them. Tony, you've got names? This is unbelievable. Oh, Janet. Janet R. Are you kidding me? Wow. So nice. $300. Janet, I'm giving you a Dan Ashley shout out. Big shout out. I'm getting you another Dan Ashley shout out. Big shout out. And I'm getting you a third Dan Ashley shout Big out shout for out. each hundred that you contributed. And I have to say, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. That is well past the number that yeah. would bring me to tears. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <sighs> Thank you, Janet. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Janet R. Unreal. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really great. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Really good. Mark T, I like you already, Mark T, with that name. <laughs> Big Dan Ashley, shout out to Mark Big T. Big shout out. For $100. Come on, Mark T. Yeah, you just wanted to I'm shout out yourself. Cry. That's what I'm it is. Huh? I <laughs> wanted to shout out myself, and finally, Mark T. I'm stepped- not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <sighs> Such a number to make me want to cry, I have to say. I'm going to give you and Janet a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's four thank yous. Because that's $400 when you put it all together. Thank you, guys. Really awesome. Vicky S, $50. What up, Vicky? Big Dan Ashley shout Big out. Big shout out. Yeah. That thank is you, awesome. Vicky. Thank you, Vicky. Really thank cool. Thank you so, so much. And thank you so, so much to Brian V. Big Dan Ashley shout out. Thank you so much. And a thank you so much. Big shout out. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Jason. Jason T, thank you with $50. Thank you very much, Jason. Big Dan Ashley shout out. Big shout out. And uh, I'll give you thank a you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Mark above the bar. Yeah. We love the, it's Lori and Mark above the bar. Give you a thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, you, thank you, you. for $50. I just got an email from them today, and I will read it to you tomorrow. It involved a donation. You know how they, they sell the martinis yeah. there at uh, the bar. And as a result, uh, they have made a contribution. I'll read the whole email tomorrow to start the show. Guys, That is so cool. And I know there are many more of you who have made contributions. Your names will show up at the end of the show here on our credit list, and we do appreciate it. Look, I know you don't make contributions to get a shout out. Like, I mean, that's not what this show is about. So like when I see some, I saw a comment saying, you know, we all give to what what we can, of course. And, And there's some we're not giving at all. I understand, please. 
And I understand mostly you give because you like the show and you want us to stay on the air. And that I really appreciate. You don't give because you're trying to get a shout out. I mean, we could do two hours of just people giving and we could just be doing shout outs. But what I really want you to know is that I appreciate all of you because it does take everybody at whatever level uh, to keep us going. Because honestly, that's what we need now. So very and much huge, appreciate. And huge it. help as well. If it's not money, but just like sharing, subscribing, that kind of stuff, helping us in the algorithm help a lot too. Yeah, obviously. thank you. That's that right. helps new people find us and on and on and on. If you share it, uh, you can share it on Facebook. You can share it wherever you are normally. That helps. Uh, we have, um, you know, I know Nikki does her show and it's simulcast to Facebook. Yeah. We may do that, you know. I, I have to work that out. Okay. Honestly, I'm so snowed with the YouTube thing, man. I, I just don't have the bandwidth for this. I'm also working on other things. I'm trying to get certain graphic aspects of our opens that are really built for radio. I'm trying to get them built for this medium. So we're trying to evolve the show every month to new places. And I'm, you know, I'm worried about doing that. And I'm not necessarily out there hustling viewers and listeners, but I have to do that as well. It, we're helped, as Tony says, if you can do that also. Thanks, Tony. So if you can share the show and hit the likes and all that stuff that we do. It's, Mash it with your iron rod. That's another way you can do it. So uh, good stuff. But thank you, Tony, for putting that all together, man. That's a lot of work. And uh, I appreciate it very, very much. So oh, is it really that time already? Wow, it's past that time. We started late. Yeah. We're ending late. Just all over yeah. the place today. Yeah. I can tell you that Nikki's show is already underway on the Nikki Madaro channel. If you want to go check it out, it's already always right a good time. Yeah. And uh, Shadow is going to join us next week. Somebody asked about Shadow Stevens. He's going to join us live next week, so that's going to be kind of exciting. Um, thank you, all of you, for sharing the show, for liking the show, for being part of our family here on this channel. Kim, thank you. Thank you. Buttigieg blame for Southwest response. Well, I know where that blame's coming from. You gotta blame somebody. You know. It's the Democrats' fault. Comedy Central roast. Wow. I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Thompson Show. Oh, there you go. Bye bye. I'm curious about Nikki's show now. I'm gonna watch. Tony. Bye bye. Tony, thank you for playing hurt, Tony. Appreciate it. Until tomorrow. Bye bye.